Calling rocket R-13. Calling rocket R-13. This is R-13. Inger speaking, Excellency. Attention, R-13. In 521 seconds, you will be over the Earth's magnetic north pole. We'll proceed with phase two of the Operation Ice Age. Let me speak with Dantor. Dantor is speaking, Excellency. You will jump from the rocket at exactly 14 hours minus 18 seconds, Dantor. Are you ready? I am ready, Excellency. The repeller ray treated plastic coverings will protect both yourself and the Magna Terminal from Commander Cody's dust blanket. So you have nothing to fear. I have no fear, Excellency. But the entire planet Earth will have much to fear. And soon, eh, huh, Tanto? It is your will, Excellency. Sign off now and stand by. Enter calling Baylor. Phase two is completed. Stand by. This is Baylor reporting from Earth. Tanner has just completed phase two of Operation Ice Age and is standing by to commence phase three. We're ready to receive the synchronous interlock signal by direct wave. Calling station X7 on Saturn. Calling station X7 on Saturn. Station X7, turn speaking. Stand by for the synchronous interlock signal. Standing by, Your Excellency. Picking up the timer signal all right, Tantor? Yes. from Earth. At the moment of synchronous interlock, there was a sharp earthquake, Your Excellency. That was to be expected. With the simultaneous activation of the magnet terminals of Saturn and Earth, Earth became the doomed captive of the larger world. As Saturn turns on its axis, the magnetic force beam connecting the two planets will gradually tilt the Earth so that the south pole points eternally towards the sun while the North Pole points towards the frigid outer space. As the sun side of the Earth burns, the dark side will become locked in frozen death. How long will this take? A week. The Earth has seven days in which to surrender. Well, what if the scientists find some way to counteract this magno force ray? That's impossible. Even Commando Cody will have to admit defeat this time. Observatory and ask for an immediate solar fix. Yes, sir. Commando, what's happening? It's too early to say, sir. 
but there's a possibility that Earth has been tilted slightly on its axis. Hello, observatory. This is Commander Cody's office calling. Arrange for an immediate fix on the sun's position. You what? Three seconds of arc? That was immediately after the shock was felt? Thank you, sir. Professor Kirkson says the sun was under observation at the time of the shock. It's apparently moved its position three seconds of arc to the south. Then the planet Earth has been tilted three seconds of arc toward the north. That's not all, Commando. Professor Kirkson says the Earth is still tilting. I'll need more than secondhand reports. Help me with my flight jacket, Dick. Right. What will happen if the Earth keeps on tilting, Commando? It'll mean the end of life as we know it. Keep me informed by insignia radio, Joan. I will, Commando. What can I tell the Security Commission? That this must be another attack against Earth by the ruler. And the countermeasures will be undertaken as soon as we know what we're up against. unable to make harbor should stand out to open sea. Calling Commando Cody. The first report Calling Commando Cody. Is just beginning to come oh, in. Dick, why doesn't he answer? Was worldwide. It was Calling Commando Cody. And it appears that this planet I'm has in, been John. spared a major catastrophe. Commando, the National Weather Bureau reports a tremendous storm sweeping across the entire western hemisphere. That's no news to me, Joan. I'm in the center of it. In another hour, it will have swept halfway across the continent. Dick and Mr. Henderson think that you should come back. Commando, this is Dick. Don't take chances, sir. Stand by. I'm going down for a closer look. Calling Commando Cody. Come in, Commando. Calling Commando Cody. Come in, please. Okay, Dick. It's hard to hear you. This storm is the worst I've ever seen. I'm flying low over the Pacific. Some of the waves are bigger than mountains. I'm going to have to get above the storm. Has it reached you yet? Not yet, sir. Then you and Joan take off in the rocket before it does. Pick me up upstairs above the cosmic dust blanket. Right away, sir. We're on our way. We're on our way to the rocket area, Commando. We'll be there in 10 minutes. When you take off, set a rocket course of 175 degrees and start scanning for me at 100,000 feet. Check, Commando. I'm heading into the dust layer now. Hope the dispeller tubes weren't damaged by that storm down below. through the dust layer now, sir. I'll keep a lookout for you. I see you, Dick. Make a night in, you'll pick me up on the scanner. Make a night in, John.
rocket piloting, Jones. Say, what'd you find out? Set a course for the North Pole and put all controls in automatic. I'll bring you up to date as I talk to Mr. Henderson. Commando Cody calling Mr. Henderson. Calling Mr. Henderson. This is Henderson, come in, Commando. The Earth is being tilted at right angles to its axis at the approximate rate of 15 seconds of arc every five minutes. Did you find out what is causing this, Commando? The violent storms indicate a powerful magnetic disturbance centering around the North Pole. It may be that Earth is being tilted by a magnetic drag from another and larger planet. Can we stop this thing? I don't know yet. Have there been any reports of uh, temperature gradients around the world? Yes. A rapid decline of temperature is taking place throughout the entire northern hemisphere. And south of the equator, temperatures are reported going up. Warn the Security Commission to prepare the people of the north for unseasonable freezing within the next 24 hours. Commando. Calling Commander Cody. Come in, please. We'll be without radio contact as long as we're anywhere near the North Pole. What do you mean that noise has something to do with the magnetic drag you were talking about? What's more, it's going to lead us right where we want to go. Take over from automatic, Dick. Hi, sir. Joan, keep an eye on the scanner. Correct course to 354 degrees. 354 degrees. By using the entire rocket ship as a direction finder, we ought to be able to hit right into the heart of trouble. Commando, quick! It's a magnetic force field, all right. What will it do to us? I don't know. Better head back, Dick. Yes, sir. Fly there and get help, Commando. There'll be no more flying this trip. What's the matter, out of fuel? When you picked me up, I had about four minutes left. Flying through that storm really used up the power supply. You know, you should have worked in a meat market, Commando. I never knew anyone who could slice it so thin. This homemade direction finder locates a magnetic force field like a charm. Get ready for a hike through the snow, Dick. Yeah, good enough. We'll pick up a sled and some dogs at that settlement. You stay here, Joan. We'll send the relief party back to try to dig the rocket out of snow and pre-digest for takeoff. They'll need your supervision. 
well, if you put it that way. Commando, this sure beats walking. Boy, am I glad they could out to this back in the village. <laughs> These parkers feel good. Take another bearing, Dick. Yes, sir. Bearing reads the same, sir. Yo! It's the same. That means what we're looking for is right around here someplace. Hey, look at that. Get the team ready for a fast getaway in case that's the place I think it is. All right.
loose, Dick. We're getting out of here. You act like you've been slicing it thin again, Commando. About two minutes, then. March! More than that, Dick. What happens when you stretch your rubber band as far as you can, then cut it? It snaps back! Right. And that's just what's going to happen to the whole world any time now. Mush along, boys! Get out! Get out! side. there, just over the next hill. And the panic has stopped. The people are settling down. Congratulations, Commander Cody, for a job well done. Thank you, sir. We're returning to base and should be landing in the next half hour. I'll let you have my full report then. Over and out. On automatic, sir. Good. You know, I still don't see how it was possible for the ruler to tilt the earth. Maybe you learned how from the Greeks. The Greeks? That's right. Over 2,000 years ago, a Greek named Archimedes said, build me a lever long enough and I will lift the world. Well, how do you know? <laughs> <laughs> 